are standing before a replica of an aircraft that first flew in 1910. You made an interesting point during your uh, speech earlier regarding the relevance of this aircraft and if it weren't for this plane, we wouldn't be standing here today. Tell me a little bit about how this connects to NBAA. Well, the connection is a very direct one. When the Wright brothers um, really felt they had honed practical flight in 1905, they hid that airplane and they began a letter writing campaign to find customers that may be interested in a flying machine. And sure enough, the first folks that wrote back to them were a group of businessmen that said, we'd like to see what you have. So it's so appropriate that we're here at the biggest convention in the world for business aviation and that um, the Wright brothers, their, their first request was from a group of businessmen to see what a flying machine was all about. During your presentation, you cited some of the specific requirements that the U.S. Army had yeah. for a flying yeah. machine, and those requirements also carried out to trying to market the design to private flyers. Tell me a few of those requirements, if you can. The uh, speed, uh, it had to be able to go a distance of 100 to 125 miles. I think a really important was that it had to be able to land safely. It had to be able to be toted by a couple of men in a wagon. The flying of it had to be able to be learned by an intelligent man over a couple of days training. So I don't know if we can exactly uh, interpret what an intelligent man is in a contract, but they surely made an attempt to. So this is a pretty interesting contract. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Airplanes are, are neat things, and the Wright history is so phenomenal. You know, people thought that the Wrights were lucky bicycle builders that built something that flew. They built a wind tunnel because it w their airplane at Kitty Hawk in uh, 1902 would not fly. And they built a wind tunnel, developed the math, and today the coefficient of lift uses a constant. The constant that they were using was 0 .05. And they developed a wind tunnel to check that constant and found out it was 0 .03. And Boeing today is using 0 .0297 something. So I mean, they were right on. And they were true scientists. I mean, it's, uh, it's not, you know, they weren't lucky. These guys were really, really bright. This airplane has a stabilator on it, which is right. They had stabilators, and that's a full flying surface in the back. <clears throat> the problem you can get into is a thing, a phenomenon called flutter, and this is where the thing will shake until it shakes itself off the airplane. When the tail comes off, it ruins your whole day. So it had to be done right. It had to be sa safe, and I was struggling with it because the books do not go down to 70 miles an hour. So it, it was a real... It's one of those thorny problems. There's got to be a solution, but I don't have it yet. It's not in the math. It's not in the books. How do we do this? Well, this older guy came out, and he flew the airplane we've been flying for 25 years, and it was in December. And <clears throat> they flew it for half an hour or so, and they came in, and he's freezing to death. And they talked a little bit. They warmed up, and they said, let's go fly it again. So out they go again to fly the airplane. This time when they got back, I had a hot cup of coffee waiting for him. And I said, I've got a problem, because I knew he was an aeronautical engineer, Ph.D., had taught aero engineering for more than 20 years, and was eminently qualified to advise me on this thing. So I gave him the coffee, and I said, here's the problem. And he said, that's not a problem. He said, you use the rutan method. And I said, what's that? And he said, you strap it on top of a car or a truck and haul it down the runway at 85 mile an hour, and if you can't induce flutter there, you're not going to induce flutter in flight. And I said, thanks, Neil Armstrong. That was the advisor. <laughs> he, was out, he was out playing by flying our other airplane. But I'm sure glad he showed up that day because it was a bothersome thing to me. And to him, it was just a matter of fact here to do it. So we did it, and it worked out beautifully. Sunny or cloudy? 
rainy or bright, day or night. The future of flying is now clearly in sight. Garmin SBT, synthetic vision technology. They developed the science. They got the airplane in the air in uh, 1905. And in October of 05, they uh, flew 39 minutes and then landed and said, that's it, the airplane's developed. And they put it away. And they didn't fly for another three years. They were into patents and licensing and all that stuff. They knew that when they released the information that they had to the world, it was going to take off like wildfire. And it did. They went to France in, in uh, 1908. Europe had never seen an airplane that would fly. They saw things that would sort of flop off the ground. And here Wilbur got off the ground, and he's flying circles around the field, and people are going crazy. And all of a sudden, the kings and queens of, of Europe show up to get a ride. That was the, the springboard of aviation, and people, engineers, looked at what they'd done and suddenly knew what they had to do. Before that, they had no idea that you didn't steer an airplane like a boat. They didn't have the idea of three axes of steering, the roll control to turn. This was a right invention. So when that got loose, everybody started building airplanes that could fly. And the thing that gets me is that was 1908. In 1915, there were fighter planes in dogfights firing machine guns through the propeller. I mean, that, that's seven years. We went from a right airplane all the way to dogfight airplanes. That's really phenomenal. You know, they, they turned on the world. You're the great grandniece of the fathers of modern aviation. Tell me a little bit about the, your, the significance to you personally being involved with the foundation, the, the history of the Wright Project. One of the greatest things about this history is that um, two things. I think it is truly an American story that two young men came out of nowhere and solved a problem that had perplexing many people, many scientists and engineers for a long time. And they read everything they could about it. They did their own experimentation and they tried to solve a problem and they were very successful. And the second piece that I think about when I think about this history is their success completely changed the face of mankind. The fact that it connected us, that this uh, success in 1903 of controlled powered flight shrunk the world and really began the explosion of all modern technology as we know it today. Looking to the skies is still something that inspires our planet today and will, uh, for the future, tell us more about ourselves and tell us more about what might be a part of our universe as well. So the, uh, the story continues. The history didn't stop, and it continues every second, every minute of every day.